The government has agreed to a request by the Minister for Transport, Eamon Ryan, to have the army on standby to help with security potentially over the summer. It comes after calamitous scenes like these at the end of last month. Also, the government says some early work is underway on legislation that could lead to the return of mandatory mask wearing in certain circumstances. The move is being seen as precautionary, with no immediate plans to introduce it in the Dáil before summer recess. Well, here's what the Justice Minister had to say. So this is simply uh, a mechanism that we're going to put in place that would allow a number of members of the Defence Forces to be trained up uh, in security screening. It would not be public facing, so it would be there to help a lending hand should they need it. But obviously we hope we won't get to that point. And really this is only being proposed for the summer months where we know it's going to be extremely busy and is busy at the moment. Emer Higgins and Jed Nash are still here and we're also joined by Bauer Media's political correspondent Sean Defoe. Sean, give us a bit more detail here. What's involved in this contingency plan? Uh, but the one for the mayor board involves basically dra drafting in the army if it is going to be needed over the next couple of months. Now, they're not automatically going to go in. If they are, it's because something has gone wrong as it has gone wrong a few times now in the past. And they wouldn't be in public facing roles, as Ma Helen McEntee said there. So they're not going to be checking your bag on security or have army officers checking whether or not your little Ziploc bag actually has the right size of toothpaste in it. That's not what's going to happen. Instead, they're looking at them for roles that they have at, say, entrances to the airport or patrolling the perimeter or things like that that would free up other staff to then come in and do those security and check-in uh, roles. Um, what period of time are they looking at and how many airports or army staff do they have on standby? So it's going to start on the 6th of July and run basically through August. So you're looking at about a six-week period of the busiest time of the year and probably up to about 100 army staff are going to effectively be on standby for this. They have to do a bit, little bit of training to get them ready for the roles and just to comply with airport security and all that kind of thing. But they'll probably still be stationed at the two barracks somewhere in Dublin and if there is a big issue with the airport then drafted in, although you imagine if there is a huge air issue and people are suddenly missing their flights, uh, that just drafting them in with an hour or two hours notice probably isn't going to make a huge amount of difference at that stage. Uh, I'm just wondering because DEA did say a, a few weeks ago on this programme when we asked them about, you know, whether or not the army would be brought in, they said, we don't need the army. You know, we have our own army of staff here. What's changed? Well, well, what's changed, they obviously they don't feel that they have enough people because of the COVID surge that we're seeing, and that's putting a lot of people out of action. So where they said a couple of weeks ago, we're grand, we're recruiting, I think it's about 50 people a week, going to have an extra 600 by the end of the summer. But now they're also facing a lot of people being out, a lot of people being out at short notice. And that's what's led them uh, to do this precaution measure. They say this, hope they won't need it, and I think everyone kind of hopes that they won't need it and everything will be fine, <coughs> but that's why they put it in place. Uh, what do you think of this, uh, Jed Nash? I mean, we did, all the politicians said the DAA needed to have a contingency <coughs> plan in place. You couldn't have uh, scenes like we saw a couple of months ago uh, repeated across the summer as the airport got uh, busier. So do you welcome this? Well, look, the, the, the sound you're hearing now is the sound of chicken chickens coming home to roost. Um, we know that during the height of the pandemic, even though um, the Dublin Airport Authority were drawing down millions upon millions of euros in state supports through the wage subsidy scheme, they were still letting many, many hundreds of staff go through what they termed a voluntary a redundancy scheme. So I remember the phrase that the CEO used, them, it was really vomit inducing, right sizing, right sizing the airport. They weren't aware when, you know, flights were going to come back to normal. They thought it was going to be 2024, 2025. This is all on DAA management. And let's be frank about this. I mean, I, I heard today from the director of communications when he was saying, oh, this is a case of one state agency helping another. It's not, you know, the ESB helping out another commercial semi-state agency. This is calling in the army, the, the military force in our country. I know, but we also just happens. have to suppose that deal with the happens. reality of the situation at the moment. If there are more problems, like the ones we saw last month, do the army need to be brought in? See, I mean, this was a, this was a, a failure uh, from a resource planning po uh, perspective uh, from Dublin Airport Authority. Yes, but do it's the army recently. need to be brought in? Well, I know, at I, the I, moment I, to I, solve I can't make that call because I'm not aware of what the actual needs are. But do you have any issue with the, the army moment. being brought in well, if they are needed? Th that decision has been taken. It's a contingency, as we understand it. We don't have all of the details. But DAA could have seen this coming. What they did was they essentially, you know, got rid uh, of some of the staff. They, they used the opportunities provided by the pandemic to actually, as they say, right-size their staff. In fact, what they did was get rid of some very, very essential staff and had a rehiring staff, some of them who used to work there, on actually lower rates and poorer terms and conditions. So this has been a, a bad experience, a bad episode for DAA management if they haven't come out of this well. Um, I'm conscious too that uh, PT4, the uh, army union, or one of the army unions has come out um, today and said, look, we are not here to solve private companies' HR problems. They're not happy about being called in, are they, Emer? 
Well, they're not, and you can understand that. I mean, we've very trained, highly skilled um, members of the Defence Forces, many of whom work in, in Casement Airdrome and Baldonnell in my own constituency, and I appreciate that. Um, and they stepped up to the plate when we needed them to do other tasks uh, during COVID-19, and we're all so grateful for that. And none of us want them to be working in Dublin Airport, that's for sure. This is absolutely precautionary. Like before politics, I came from the private sector. We always have what we're called BCPs, business continuity plans. This is what this is. This is a situation where if COVID means that people can't come to work in Dublin Airport Authority, what we need to make sure is that people can still catch their flights. This is a precautionary plan that we're putting in place um, in the event that that happens. Um, while Jed is, is right, people were let go during the pandemic, that happened in airports right across the globe. This isn't just a Dublin airport issue. This okay, has happened we, we, in the UK, we, it's we, happened in we, France, we, it's happened we, in Okay, Italy. And to be honest, and of your own, to be honest, need, on what expensive we're doing here in our, And what, if you just let me finish, Jed. Yeah. What we're doing here in Ireland is we're taking action to make sure that people aren't going to lose their family holidays. I mean, in the UK, they're not taking this action. Instead, they're asking airlines to cancel flights. What we want to do is make sure that people can get on their flights. That's what we want to do. OK, and very briefly, uh, Sean, there are still lots of issues within the airport. You only have to look at social media, to look at, you know, the rubbish, to look at some of the queues, to look at the baggage issues. They're huge. Uh, it's, been, it's been a total disaster of management for the last while. And, like, politicians quite often get into this thing of let's call in the army. It hasn't already been for the airport, you know. Rhododendrons in Killarney National Park, let's call in the army. It's been all these different things and now it, it is actually getting done. But this isn't going to solve all those problems because it's not going to provide extra baggage handlers for the check-in desk for the airlines. A lot of the problems are actually now with the airlines themselves and the COVID problems that they have. So, uh, look, I, th I think it's a bit ridiculous and farcical. I would tend to agree with PD4 that if you're drive, uh, bringing in the army to solve a private company's problems, the private company hasn't done a very good job managing their business. Uh